The first round of the NFL draft was Thursday night, and the Patriots took a cornerback, drafting Christian Gonzalez at 17th overall. I'm Meredith Gorman here in the PNC Bank Sports Studio, joined by our Patriots beat reporter, Zach Cox. And Zach, the, the Patriots, Patriots traded down, get arguably the top cornerback in the draft at 17th overall. What do you think of the pick? I think it's a slam dunk. Uh, I think this was about as well uh, as the Patriots could have hoped uh, round one would have gone in this draft. As you mentioned, Christian Gonzalez, one of the top cornerback prospects in this draft. Pretty much every expert had him either at number one or at number two uh, behind Devin Witherspoon from Illinois. He was widely expected to go in the top 10. And then the Patriots are able to not just grab him in, in the middle of the first round, but also trade back three spots, acquire that extra fourth round pick that they most likely will use uh, to move around the board on day two. Uh, I think this was a win-win overall, and he's a player who fills a clear need for them. Yeah, this was a home run for the Patriots. Yeah, obviously, like you said, there's some changes in the secondary heading into this Patriots season. What do you think he brings to the table in terms of versatility? Uh, well, the biggest thing he brings to the table, in my opinion, is size and length and athleticism. Uh, you look at what the Patriots cornerback group looked like last year. They mostly relied on undersized players there. Jalen Mills was the only Patriots cornerback who even cracked six foot on that roster last season. And he missed most of the second half of the year and reportedly is moving to safety. It was all of these five, eight, five, nine, five, ten guys. And it really showed up against some of the bigger, more talented receivers they faced down the stretch. Gonzalez is six foot one, almost 200 pounds, one of the most athletic corners in this draft class, uh, mostly played as an outside corner in college, but does have some experience in the slot. So I think he will be a player that the Patriots uh, can move around a little bit. But uh, if he reaches the level the, that a lot of draft analysts expect him to reach, he should be that true number one cornerback that the Patriots have had throughout Bill Belichick's tenure, uh, but notably did not have last season. Yeah, and he'll, of course, be at Gillette Stadium this afternoon for his first in-person media availability as a Patriot. But looking at the draft as a whole, obviously, if you were watching it from back home, there were a lot of surprises <laughs> that went on in that first round. But on your end, what surprised you the most uh, in the first round? Uh, well, I mean, one of the big surprises was Gonzalez sliding all the way to 17. Uh, another one was Will Levis, one of the top quarterbacks, falling all the way out of the first round. Uh, I would imagine that he'll probably hear his name called pretty early on day two, uh, but that was a guy that a lot of people thought was going to go in the top five, potentially even all the way up at number two, uh, and he slides all the way out of round one. And, and it was interesting to see, too, just two former Patriots executives really controlling the top of that draft. Uh, it was Nick Casario in Houston, uh, Monty Austin Fort in Arizona, both of them making aggressive trades to move up the board uh, in that top five, top 10 area. Uh, those are two teams with two of probably the weakest rosters in the NFL, uh, and they were really proactive uh, in trying to add some talent uh, to two teams that were, were down near the bottom of the league. So going to be very interesting to see how those rosters play out, but uh, they certainly had a plan, and they were not shy about uh, going after it. Yeah, and looking at the uh, potential picks later on today, what do you see the Patriots doing in the second and third round? Uh, well, I think there's a lot of talented pass catchers left on the board. Uh, I know there were some people who wanted the Patriots to take a wide receiver in the first round, and all of them were available there at 14 and 17. Jackson Smith and Jigba, Zay Flowers, Patriots ended up passing on those players. Uh, but there's a lot of talent at that position available on day two. Josh Downs from North Carolina uh, is a guy I really like early in the second round. Jonathan Mingo from uh, Ole Miss uh, is another talented wideout. And then you have pretty much every tight end still available on the board. Dalton Kincaid from Utah was the only one to go in the first round. So the Patriots will, if they trade up, will have a shot uh, at someone like Michael Mayer from Notre Dame, who a lot of people think is the best tight end in this class. Darnell Washington from Georgia, really fun player, gigantic guy, uh, really talented blocker. Uh, and then there's also guys like uh, Luke Musgrave from Oregon State, Sam Laporta from Iowa, really, really talented tight end class. So uh, it would I would expect the Patriots to most likely take at least one of those guys today. Maybe they wait until early day three. Uh, and then you still have some of the second, third tier offensive tackles uh, still on the board. Cody Mauk from uh, North Dakota State is one of them. Uh, there, there are a few names on there. All of, the, all of the big kind of top tier tackles are gone, but there is some, still some talent left at that position as well. 
Well, big next couple of days uh, in the NFL. I know you'll be at Gillette Stadium later today, and fans can follow you for all of the latest updates regarding the Patriots draft picks this year. Thanks so much for your time, Zach. Thank you.